Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, open source BIOS uh, at scale. So who we are? Uh, we are basically um, online scaleway. It's a hosting company uh, from the French telecom group Iliad. Uh, Iliad is better known for free telecom. Uh, what we do is uh, we, we we build uh, our own data centers uh, in France, and uh, in our data centers we we build uh, our own some of or, yeah yeah I try. <laughs> um, so uh, wait. That's, so we are a hosting company, uh, online daddy boxes to the, the brand we have for uh, uh, server hosting, and uh, Scaleway is the brand of our cloud service. And uh, to provide those services, we have data centers that uh, uh, we manage ourselves, we build ourselves, and in those data centers, we put servers from Dell, and we put servers that we built. And in those servers, there is the, an ARM32 offer that's called uh, C1 on our cloud service. It's basically, uh, I think we were the first to do uh, cloud on ARM32. And uh, then we, we went to a more uh, x86 uh, kind of server with uh, Intel uh, Avoton. And uh, the new ones, the one I will talk uh, the rest of the talk, is the the uh, the Denverton uh, chip, uh, and uh, Scaleway is hiring. So if you're interested in those kind of job, come with us. So what we did is uh, we developed um, uh, an open source BIOS. Uh, what was our requirement? Uh, basically, uh, bring up the board. Uh, do pixie booting, so boot from the network. Uh, have the OS uh, ready, so we need the uh, ACPI tables and stuff like that, so that the OS knows how much uh, CPU you have and how to change the speed, etc. Uh, we need uh, some interface with our BMC, so we can do a remote console and configure the, the system uh, from the administration network. Uh, we need an update. A secure update process, we need to be able, uh, as a hosting company, to update the BIOS and not our clients to uh, flash their BIOS uh, if they wish. Uh, it's our job, not theirs. And I think I did everything. And why, why go open source for that task? Uh, we tried BIOS vendors. Basically, they sell you something that almost works, but does not really do what you want. They give you some sources, they give you some binaries. Uh, whenever you have a question, you have to ask support, and they're not quick to answer you, and you pay extra for that. So it's not really a good solution. And basically what they are selling to you is uh, the, U the initialization of the chips that's from Intel. They are giving you the, a new UFI, stack, a UFI stack that's basically uh, from Tino Core, and they are legacy BIOS and a very nice menu with the mouse clicking to configure your system, which we don't need. <sighs> Another solution was to use uh, Intel's reference BIOS, but not, you're not allowed to do that. They give it to you just for testing, but you can't go in production with that. Uh, so, and none of those solutions did uh, cover uh, the interface with our BMC. So we need to, do it to develop something. So we went for, so we went for open source uh, to do that. So mainly there's uh, three components. Uh, core boot, which is open source, community-driven effort, uh, FSP, which is uh, the black box from Intel, and uh, Tenno Core, which is the UFI, UFI stack. So core boot does the only in it. The first stuff that's run is from core boot. Then it passes to uh, the FSP to do the memory training. Uh, gets back to core boot. 
we do the, process, the multiprocessor in it, we prepare the C CPI table and stuff like that. And we need to call the silicon init from Intel. Uh, it's doing um, more few stuff like locking some registers so it cannot be changed afterwards. And then uh, we run Tano core. Uh, basically, uh, it could be unchanged using the core boot payload from Tano core project. We did some, a few changes in there also for the, um, the BMC support. So basically, we took all that, and it worked. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it almost worked. Uh, first, uh, I was still uh, learning the core boot cost base, etc. And your system boots, you're happy, and you're, you're on Linux, and you have... Uh, uh, I end the uh, CPU and it's running at 800 megahertz. Whoa. <laughs> so you start searching on ACPI how to uh, configure the, the, those uh, speed, step, speed step features so that the, the Linux knows how to change the frequency, etc. Still doesn't work. And then you go somewhere, you, you read the, the um, Intel documentation and you have to configure some stuff, so you look into the core boot, how it's done for the chip, etc. You mostly find stuff that look like, but it's not the same chip, so it won't work. And at some point, uh, what was in my documentation and what was on core boot upstream uh, app overall like support uh, was uh, like, uh, this will do the initialization, but it's not really documented. Okay, should I use that? I asked Intel support. They said, yeah, yeah, it's, it's that code. So I integrated it, and that was it. It was booting uh, and running at 2 gigahertz. Uh, there's uh, some other stuff. Uh, that one is fun with the NVMe uh, uh, drives. That one from Samsung is working fine, and the one from Intel was not working. So we had uh, several... Uh, it changed with the Intel support, and uh, they finally found out why, so it was some uh, configuration failure, but we couldn't find it easily because we don't have a uh, uh, debug tool for uh, PCI Express. So what's good, uh, pros and cons? Uh, I start with the cons. Uh, it's a little longer to develop than using BIOS vendors. We don't have the nice graphical menu. Uh, that's not true anymore since yesterday. We uploaded some. Yeah. We we don't have uh, le legacy BIOS support. We could have used uh, uh, CBIOS for that if we really wanted, but we didn't. Uh, Intel's bug were for us, not for the vendors. So we had to to talk with them. We did, don't have. Uh, uh, BIOS vendors uh, support, but we had Intel support. So. And uh, that one is important for the community. Uh, early contribution is hard. Uh, basically, uh, the first version of Core Boot that we had was before the chip was even released. So it was under NDA, and we didn't have a uh, right to uh, talk about it. Uh, Denverton, nobody kn knew about it before uh, it was out. So uh, we couldn't contribute at that time. And when Intel uh, contributed something to Core Boot, it was a totally different code base. So basically, what I have to do now is rebase everything and redevelop some of the features to contribute. Uh, and I'm in the process of doing it. The good thing is uh, uh, most of the code is already there, and um, even more now uh, on Core Boot. Basically, it works, it fits on it, and it's uh, as fine as the Intel reference BIOS. Uh, performance as air, uh, disk card detected, everything. We have some more features related to our BMC. Uh, we can uh, configure the UART for uh, the console uh, to display information about BIOS or not, uh, stuff like that. Uh, which are really useful for debugging, but uh, we disable them in production, so it's easier to have configuration there. And uh, about the flash, um, basically, uh, the, 
the system uh, AOBNC uh, locks the flash, and uh, the Intel FSP is configuring uh, uh, the flash uh, controller uh, to protect also uh, the access of, to the flash from the host. Basically, in a regular system, only the ME component has access to the flash once it's booted. And when we want to update, we want to use flash ROM from Linux. So we have a special mode where uh, we go around the protection set up by FSP so that we can write to the flash. Uh, yeah, and uh, one good point too is uh, when discussing with Intel um, on the memory, uh, memory reference code, uh, this code has a lot of information about the training of the GDR and um, we wanted to get those information for our inventory. So we wanted uh, those information to be uh, displayed on boot. And basically Intel planned plan to uh, release the, the version that's released on, uh, on GitHub of the FSP without those features. And I told them, yeah, but we need it. So at first they said, okay, we'll give you a, a special version under the NDA. And finally they said, oh, we, we did put the version with the MRC code on GitHub, so thanks to us, everybody has access to, to that. <sighs> so it was an investment, uh, scale we had to hire me, uh, <laughs> but it was useful, and we are we're really happy to have the, the control on our, our burst stack. So that was just uh, a few prototypes, and it's going fine. Yeah, by the way, we are producing lots of those. The next uh, scale we, uh, we run on those. Any questions? Yes? We were talking about um, training the DDR. What, what do you mean by training? Yeah. <laughs> Um, basically, when uh, DDR3, yeah, okay. The the question was uh, what training the DDR means. Basically, uh, DDR3 and 4, the link between the CPU and the DDR, it's um, it's like a small network on board that runs really really fast, and it's not like uh, you put a one, you get a one at the other end. Uh, it needs to fine tune the 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 way it controls that, and the specific code to do that, we don't have it. It's uh, Intel, Intel proprietary. We don't even have the data sheet of that part. Yes? Uh, what about the management engine? Uh, in our case, uh, uh, yeah. What about the management engine? Uh, in our case, we are a direct Intel customer and we are using it. I mean, uh, uh, the Matter Management Engine add, has uh, the role to bring up uh, part of the platform. Yes, we know about uh, AWT and all those. We don't have those features in the version we have. We know it. Uh, but... Uh, uh, it, it was, uh, it was uh, by NDA. Yeah. It's part of uh, um, the, the stuff we have under NDA are the same as the other... Uh, uh, manuf manufacturer, we are, we are like, uh, yes? Can you talk about the implementation of what's running on the BMC and how you implement the BMC? Okay, uh, what's running on the BMC? Uh, basically, our BMC is a small uh, microchip, and uh, how we implemented the uh, APMI, uh, basically, we have uh, UART forward to. Uh, uh, TCP port, no, UDP port. So it's not a full uh, uh, standard APMI. It's uh, really just the feature we need. And then uh, on, uh, we have applications that run on other computers in our network to uh, uh, under the tasks. It's not a standard uh, APMI. Yes? Uh, Uh, first, the second question, one people, me. 
and uh, how long uh, I started, uh, I think it's about uh, six months, a little more than six months work. It's been more than a year, but during that time there was bias development, BMC and stuff, and when you're waiting for the support and you have no clue about the specific bug, you switch to something else. So it's more than a year, but it's probably six months. Uh, learning core boot, learning uh, EFI, and that one is a pain, <laughs> and tweaking those stuff, etc. So, yes? Are you planning to try Linux boot instead of Piano Core? <laughs> uh, are we planning to try Linux boot? Uh, yes. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, for contributing, I'm still in the process of uh, uh, upstreaming uh, our changes. And I see, it, I see it as a requirement before trying Linux boot because it's integrated in latest core boot. Uh, and then we'll see, um, as a developer, I will try it and we'll see how to deploy it, if it has benefits or not, et cetera. I think it does. If there's no more questions, then uh, I'd say I thank you everyone for being there and probably see you next year.